Greetings, John. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Okay, great. Uh, let me see if I can raise this volume. I just want to make my volume good enough because I'm doing this a certain way. Okay, so um, I wanted to. Uh, I know it's it's that, it's that time of of year. I don't know why we do this <laughs> because I know you're probably busy because people are going to talk to you about uh, what what they call it, Indigenous Day. What do they call it these days? I don't know what they call it. Indigenous Peoples Day. Okay, well, in fact, that that should be my first question. Now, let let me ask you this. It, it still reminds you that they, it's like a it grew out of. I guess a reaction to Columbus Day, a uh, uh, reacting against Columbus Day. I mean, how did that? How did they rename it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I got mixed feelings about um, trying to insert a native holiday in place of Columbus Day because mm -hmm. it ends up being a shared holiday, no matter no matter how you slice it, right? That's right. I mean, you wouldn't do do a uh, Holocaust Remembrance uh, uh, Day on something that is also shared in. Uh, celebrating history, but uh, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the other problem, that, not the problem that I have, but let me put it this way. Let, let, let's go down this rabbit hole here. You know, there, there's a, there's, there, you know, infinity, there's a future infinity, you know, the, 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 the future, right? Then there's, then there's like a, a past infinity. If you keep on celebrating certain things, uh, first of all, they, people corrupt it and just, it just becomes, you know, a marketing day. But, you know, does that sort of remind? It sort of keeps you in the in the past. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, unfortunately, especially if you're sharing the holiday with somebody like Columbus, I mean, you gotta like address that past. I mean, and it and it's kind of really hard to celebrate um, indigenous people when the history, which continues through today, is just rife with oppression. I mean, we're still. I mean, one of the things that I brought up, I, I recorded a show for the Washington um, station that I'm on. Mm -hmm. But WBAI didn't ask me if I wanted to do anything, so of course I didn't. But um, but uh, for the Washington show, I, I did something. And of course, it was a little bit Washington-specific. It's, it's ironic that they wanted me to do a show on Indigenous Peoples Day in a city called Washington District of Columbia. Mm. Um, so you have that. But, you know, you do, you, you have all of this, you know, this, this constant reminder and, and look, we're, we're still facing some of the very same things that began with Columbus. Columbus, before he actually enslaved everybody, uh, on, on those islands, he did this system of tribute, right? Where they had to go out and bring to him, line up and remit to him a tax, you know, a tribute. We're still fighting uh, the, the same federal government every single day over taxes. So, so what's what's changed, and how do we celebrate? I mean, I just have a problem celebrating the fact that we. I know people love to celebrate resiliency, but when you're trying to celebrate resiliency from oppression that continues, mm. that's how do you celebrate that? Mm. I, I don't know. It, just, I, I, it is it is definitely. You know, I'm not a big fan of holidays anyway. I mean, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me let me put it this way. I don't mean to cut you off, but let me put it this way. It seems though, if you do that, then you sort of remain in the past, or you you're constantly how do you say? Um, it's it's almost like a back. It's like a backwash. You're remaining in the backwash. You know, they can keep on throwing stuff in there, but oh, remember this, remember that. And you get like, you don't really you don't de really deal with going forward. I mean, well, I mean, but honestly, that regardless of whether it's a holiday or not, we're we're, we're we face that. I mean, because I mean, look. I got to fight white people calling themselves Indians for their for their school mascot for Christ's sake. I mean, uh, I mean, we're we're constantly in, in a battle that is, uh, you know, that that runs from the past to the present. So I don't know the holiday does it anymore, but I mean, and it's it's a nice thought to think that we can just celebrate Native people, but I mean, it, it's it's hypocrisy. I mean, it, it's hypocrisy. I mean, I did a show uh, last week. Uh, again, I was off WBI, but I did a show last week uh, where I tried to make people aware because I think there's this real, almost gross misconception about the scale that those residential boarding schools, mm -hmm. um, what they did, I mean, how, how mm -hmm. what the scope was. I mean, we're talking about children being ripped from their homes for 150 years. That's five generations of my people had their 
children, not every child, but, you know, large numbers of our children were ripped from our homes and sent to these boarding schools where their identity was crushed. I mean, that's a hundred, that's, that's longer than slavery was legal in the United States. Now, I'm not saying that slavery, you know, wasn't around and that didn't continue after uh, they abolished it, but you have the abolition of slavery, you have the you have the Civil War, the abolition of slavery. You have the women's suffrage movement. You have civil rights. You have you know child protection laws and uh, child labor laws. All while children, our children were being ripped from our homes, from from, from Lincoln to Reagan. That's mm. how long the period of time was. I mean, well, I can people even wrap their head around the scope of that. Well, look, let me ask you, there's another problem that I have, or another situation with that. When you rip people from their homes and you give them another culture, they come back to your culture with those values of the culture that they, that they were taught or, or indoctrinated to, or I would say, um, I don't know, you know, uh, brainwashed to. So so you're going to well, have... That's, and that, that's even if, you, if you, even, you even have a home to go, go back to. Uh, you have to understand, we experienced the largest period of land loss and identity loss during that 150 years. When you change somebody's name, you sever the family tie. I mean, not only do you sever the family tie with geography and, and time, but then some of these kids didn't even know who their family was after that. Mm -hmm. So and, and to the extent that when I look at our, our modern existence today, it's rife with the impacts of residential schools. I mean, look, the vast majority of Native people are Christians. Well, that didn't happen willingly. That was imposed upon people. The vast majority of Native people consider themselves Americans. I don't, but mm. the vast majority do. Why? Because of that forced indoctrination. So, well, well, yeah, you're right. This all got brought back to our communities. And, and of course, they also passed a law in 1934 called the Indian Reorganization Act that, that was bent on st uh, stomping out traditional governments mm. and creating these little constitutional governments that modeled their constitutions after the United States. So our governing structures, our culture, our language, you know, any, whatever you want, whether you want to call it the spirituality or the imposition of religion. I mean, all of that stuff, I mean, the, the whole family unit, instead of being the extended family of, you know, grandparents, you know, uh, or clan systems and grandparents and, and aunts, and all, now it became that nuclear family that was dysfunctional even at that level because that's what the whole purpose was. But, so, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about living in the past, but the problem is that we are living with the with the legacy of all that stuff today. We can't ignore how we got here. And the only way that, that I can promote, promote something like decolonization, which is, to me, the, this idea of unraveling ourselves from this, this oppression, is to, is to shine a light on it. So, yeah, I, you know, it's unfortunate that, that so much of the history, and it's not our history. It's American history. It's the history of you know, USA and democracy and church and religion. That's it's not, none of that stuff is our culture. This was all stuff that was done to us. Well, I guess what I'm getting at really is, uh, I guess it's a matter of percentages. In other words, right now, I, I, I call it thing, I live in, I live in what, I, I, I function in what I call the third infinity. The third infinity is, is the digging down of now. Now, what this basically means is that I'm in this fight right now. I'm informed by the past. But I don't, but 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 it it doesn't take up all of my time because I'm in a struggle right now. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to say the pe people that they'll say something and, and, and they'll be actually keep on reacting to the past rather than figure out new ways. Uh, I don't want to say out of the box ways, but way to struggle right now. And even the struggles that we have right now were informed by the tactics and the strategies of the past. So where where are the new tactics and strategies? You know, where, that's the question. Where 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 is our new strategy and attack? Where's our where's our new struggle songs? Where's our new? You seem to, for 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 the moment. You know, for for this for this reality right now. Well, I mean, part of it. I mean, look, one of the things that we fight um, is is still for our economy and our distinction. I mean, the United States wants to uh, believe that they have successfully uh, assimilated us into American citizenship and culture and that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, so the idea of pushing back on that, it does require that we make that analogy to whether it's paying tribute to Columbus or whether it's the IRS raising uh, native accounts, which are, which they're doing today. We had Kathy Hochul squeeze a half a billion dollars out of the Seneca uh, nation and the Seneca people are living below the poverty line. Yeah, they got a casino, but half of that revenue goes to the state. Because the state has forced its will on, uh, on on our people, so yeah, we have it, it, see. And, and without 
making the analogy to, to what people, I mean, let's face it, most people can look at the past. They can look at slavery. They can look at genocide. They can look at massacres and residents. And, and, and they can almost look at it with a little bit of horror, right? They can say, oh, mm-hmm. that was a terrible thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Well, but if it, if it continues, we have to bring that up because if they look, you haven't moved that far away from those things that you can acknowledge are horrible of the past. You haven't moved that far away from it today. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the reason, you know, that the strategy, even to fight the, 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 the issues that we're fighting for today, it, it, it still requires us to, to really, really call out what was legal, what was, you know, uh, what was socially acceptable. And, you know, and let's be honest, I mean, most of this stuff is uh, is tied to white supremacy. And the white, white supremacy is, is living pretty large right now. Yeah, well, I, I call it the system of white supremacy because I because as soon as you get that white supremacy argument, then it gets all muddled up. I just say, how do you how do you change the system? But let, in fact, let's talk about the system, not to talk about the system. But hey, what happened to the didn't you just didn't we get some sort of or you get or whatever? How we, somebody got some sort of political appointee, you know, a real native person is supposed to be in a, a, a secretary of whatever. Who is she? What's happening with that? No, she she joined the other side. Oh. oh. I mean, look, she she's not she's not working for native people. She works for the white guy who appointed her. You know, she was a democratic you know apparatus operative. You know, so look, I mean, she had a job once with with the territory that she's associated with. Hmm. But once and now that she's in that spot, she hasn't done fuck all. I mean, the, the, the Senate has been battling New York State over gaming revenue. She knew that fight because that's the job that she had when she worked for Laguna Pueblo. So she didn't do fuck all when she got in there. She basically said, um, well, if you'll assist me in rewriting the rules, maybe we can correct this stuff in the future. In the meantime, the Senecas have paid $2 billion to the state of New York, which doesn't seem like a whole lot to the state of New York, but you know what? That $2 billion is a lot to a population of only 7,000 people. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, there, there there, you go. Well, what, one... <laughs> One one last thing, if unless you want to say something, but well, I want to say last thing, but yeah, one last thing. I won't I won't lie this time. Um, f- not where do we go from here, but uh, again, I'm I'm just trying to say what tactics can be done that's that that they're not that, that people are not expecting. Let's put it that way, because everything everything that comes that that people seem to be doing. It's anticipated, ready. Right? They, 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 they done chess moved it or whatever have you. G- give me some new strategy. G- give me some new tactics. Give me some. What, what, what do you, what do you see that needs to be done that, that, that really can affect, can affect change? Let's put it that way. Well, uh, you know, I, and this isn't just a native strategy, as far as I'm concerned. I think anybody who has been involved in trying to fight the system within the system knows the challenges of that, and. And then what gets regarded as success, yeah, you've got to really take a hard look at that. I mean, how successful you know, were King and Malcolm and these guys? I mean, there were some changes that came, mm-hmm. but, I mean, has there been that kind of marked change? I mean, and, you know, so, yeah. so my, my point is, is that instead of trying to fight the system within the system, we need to just, you know, again, I like to talk about decolonization. Try to do as much as uh, operate as much of your life outside the influences of government, local, state, federal. Do as much as you can that avoids any interaction with the government. So you undermine it. You you almost make them irrelevant in your life. Now I know that's not entirely possible, Mm -hmm. but I mean I'm not saying try to topple the system. But I'm not even trying to. And certainly running for office. Look, I think some of the, the the elected black officials. Are just as bad as some of the, the, oh, no, the white I, officials. And we know New York State is New York. Obama to Eric Adams. No, New York, New York, New York is really where they actually have more black faces in every position in the New York from from, from state, local, or whatever have you, and nothing has changed. So we, I, so we definitely understand that. You know, it's just yeah. So that's so that's my point. My point is stop believing that you're going to because look, once you join that system, that you are that system. I mean, that's the same thing I say about Deb Allen being appointed to the, you know, to a cabinet post as the interior department. She's, she's not. 
She's looking out for the best interest of the United States. That's that's the national interest. That's what and that's what her job is. It is our best or, or we're still and, you know, her, or we're still her own interests, you know, because these people start to get 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 rich. You know, they they turn almost like immediately. They turn. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they, they not they not only get rich, they get they get drunk with power or authority yeah. or what they think is power authority, and they really don't really have that kind of power authority because they're really just a part of the machine. So the more that we can do, so. I mean, and, and, and it's not impossible to do these things. I mean, you can do things that, that are at the community level. You know, you, you stay more engaged with your neighbors and, you know, oh, okay. and you do things more cooperatively, you form more co-ops that are, you know, and I know it's tough because mm. look, our, our, we, we've all been so negatively impacted by much mm. of that culture that every time we build a group of people, we, all of a sudden we find that we got people in that group who are not, who, who don't share those values. And, yeah. But, but that's, I think that's what we have to work with. you got to find like-minded people, not only like-minded people within what you consider your group, but like-minded people from, from group to group. And, you know, and yeah. I think one of the things that I, that I try to do, especially with the black community, is, is, is try to have enough conversation so they understand, look, we experience racism too. I mean, and it, and it manifests sometimes a little differently, but most of it's very, very similar. I mean, the, the, one of the, the biggest differences that we have is that we are um, we are not considered urban culture, right? I mean, we're we're in these remote places, that, you know, that we of land that we're able to hang on to, and we've had to struggle to do that. Um, so we we have a land base that usually isn't enough to be make us self sufficient, but but it is a land base, and and we're we're uh, we're in no threat of things like gentrification, but we are in in threat, you know, under threat of the influences of what is considered progress within the dominant culture that creeping into our territory. And, yeah. and I'm not complaining about casinos necessarily. Most of those aren't right where we live anyway. But but I think if we if we start building our, res, our you know if we start building little residential uh, areas like that that look like the suburbs, so to speak, that's not our culture. Mm. If we don't start t- taking care of some some of the things and understanding that they have to have, you 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 should have. Your your neighbors should be um, uh, the result of relationships, not just that you your name came up on a list for a, for the next you know nation built house or something like that. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so it sounds like what you're saying is is uh, we have to be cellular. <laughs> we have well, to have yeah, li- ab- absolutely, absolutely. And and I know that doesn't mean we're going to ever be necessarily fully self sufficient, but I think that's that should be the goal that we strive for. But I think the more independent we live our lives from the effects of this stuff, you know, and, and, and again, I, I just heard somebody suggesting that there was there was talk about the Cherokees, you know, pushing to have a seat in Congress. I'm thinking, well, what the fuck good is that going to do? Mm. I mean, 435 seats of Congress, and you think you're going to have one person sitting there and you're going to affect change at the national level? Give me a freaking break. I mean, I mean, I think we have we as Native people, as individual nations and collectively, we have more power if we through our distinction and our autonomy than trying to fit within that system. And I say the same thing. You know, I mean, part of the I mean, some of the biggest uh, successes and strides that were made within the uh, within the Black community wasn't trying to get. I mean, they can give Johnson all kinds of credit for signing the Civil Rights Act, but you know that was almost a foregone conclusion after you got enough black people to stand together. Mm. But we have a hard time getting that done now. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for t- thanks for t- giving me a little bit of time and talking. And uh, you know, you know what I, you know what I want to do. This has got to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen because I got I'm, I'm I'm going back. I got to. I got some trips to do, but I'm going back. You know, I basically live in Africa, but uh, I got to spend yeah, some time yeah. up there at, 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 at your place. You know, when I say some time, like like three weeks, something like this, is to talk to people, just to feel things out or whatever have you. I don't know how we're going to make yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, but we got to do that. I got, a, I got a friend of mine who's uh, got this gazebo outside with a big fire pit inside in the middle of it. You know, we 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 talk, we we, we jokingly call it holding council, but it's really just us. That's sitting around a fire and having a conversation. That's exactly like, what I'm saying. That's because exactly, that's what we're doing. I, I'm in a place uh, in the Eastern Cape of, of Southern Africa called Zimbaza, and I've created a thing called the Lejote Hut, where it's basically, it's, 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 it's like a house, a little a little house, a very little house, it, it even got an outhouse, right? And we, we counsel there. We just sit around and talk. It's what we call yeah. talk to speech, you know, and then action, you know, that that's the whole point of it, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah, wow. 
All right, right, man. If you, if you smile, we'll do that. We'll do that. All right, man. Well, it don't be right away. So, you know, maybe next year sometime. We'll see what happens. Yeah, then. no, no. Whatever. You, my, my, doors open. All right, man. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you. All right. You take care of yourself. And uh, hey, you, you, you shoot the videos by. I check them out as much as I can. Oh well, yeah, I'm I'm too much on that, you know. I I've got the system now. Okay, I gotta tell you, I got this system now. I uh, I did I started Instagram a couple of years ago, right? And so what I yeah. do is I also like on my YouTube, I will do a making of. So as I'm setting up for the for the Instagram, what I'll do oh, is yeah, yeah. is I'll put a, a camera for the for the YouTube on the Instagram. The Instagram will just go up. That's only about it. it'll be less than Instagram is like less than. 10 minutes or whatever have you but the other one would be longer like the making up that and to have all sort of comments like that it's quite interesting it's it's, it's fascinating to me you know <laughs> okay I, man I, you know, I've, I've, I've got to tell you listen to that <laughs> record you play the oh man just, wasn't oh, that amazing you know, that no, was I, I don't think people realize i mean look you know, when i was a little kid i mean i went to a school that was predominantly white and and that you know and I remember, I don't know, second or third grade, running around chasing people because they were doing that goddamn one little, two little, three little mm-hmm. Indian stuff. I mean, it wasn't the thing that I, you know, you know, he's not dead, he just smells that way, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, I was, sh- I want to say I was shocked. I, mean, I knew about the records, but, you know, I never got to, t- 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 that's, that's my... The, the the guy who owns all that stuff, he's a professor. You know, he's an Africana studies professor. In fact, if you look at the wall, you see he has he's got African stuff on the wall or whatever yeah, have you. Yeah, yeah. So it was like really interesting. And I got a lot I got some feedback, very interesting people saying, Whoa. In fact, somebody said, You know something, Anthony, you were the only person that could present it that way and it not be like, you know, really bad. <laughs> well, I mean I, I could I could see Chappelle doing something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's the kind of guy that would uh you know, do do something with a record like that. But no, I I, uh, I thought that was amazing to listen to it. And then again, look look at your reaction to it. It was, uh, it, I mean, uh, it, yeah. It, I mean, it is. It gets to that point where there's a level of absurdity that is both oh. offensive and funny at the same time. That's you know? it. It's absurd. That's it. That's that's you hit. That's the word you use. That's perfectly yeah. it's all absurd all right man now yeah. let, let me let you you enjoy you enjoy you know the struggle day on monday <laughs> <laughs> all right, Take care of yourself, all right. later all right.